Hello there. Hi there. <laughs> Good morning. My audio is disconnected for a moment. Can you hear mm -hmm. me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. So I was rushing around like just half a minute ago. <laughs> I have to like, uh, I was like making a gingerbread house. Okay. You're making a gingerbread house? <laughs> yeah, because I know it's a bit early for gingerbread houses, but we just bought a gingerbread house malt and three year olds, don't we? <laughs> there is no good reason to say no. <laughs> and maybe I'm excited to find you and have an excuse. Never made a gingerbread house before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you need lots of um, stuff to decorate it with, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> I just want to reaffirm out loud. Maybe I re I do it in my head sometimes, but just that this time for us together is for spirit mm. to use as it wants, and we just be open to allowing life to say what it wants, respond as it wants, move as it wants. Okay. Mm. All right then. Good. Mm -hmm. So did you have anything that you wanted to look at? Well, That's there's good. this, there's a verse in um, chapter 13 where the last line of the verse, uh, chapter, uh, verse 17 is, hear further what leads directly to realization. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> if I could, I would have you read that one, or maybe I read the, maybe I read the verse and end it on that line, and then uh, if you want. Um, yeah, what verse? The seventeen, chapter thirteen, verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll say I'll say that I, I I came to the call with a plan, but I altered it based on what you just said. <laughs> I, I, I threw it away, threw most of it away right. just now. Plans are fine, as because plans are also made by by spirit. It's not like that. We should never have a plan or something. But just okay. that, yeah, like it's okay to if the plan doesn't play out, then we're not going to be upset. About it. I, I really sure. appreciate that you come with a plan because I wish that I could be a bit more prepared. <laughs> I just never am. I don't have a lot of time to just kind of be prepared. Really. So I do appreciate your preparedness and your plans. <laughs> you bet. You bet. <laughs> so this chapter so far, um, um, probably... Um, Every single line, except for the last line of each verse, ends with the word unreal. Mm -hmm. And so verse 17 kind of represents a transition in the, mm -hmm. I want to just jump in. What is said and what is unsaid are only unreal. What is free ever is Brahman alone. Whatever is seen as differentiated is only unreal. What is differenceless ever is Brahman alone. Whoever hears this explanation attentively and understands it as told will become the supreme. Hear further what leads directly to realization. Mm -hmm. What could possibly be said now? Right. No, but everything's unreal. What could possibly be said? <laughs> you want me to read? 
<laughs> All things are Brahma, which is existence bliss. All people are Brahma, which is existence bliss. I am Brahma, which is consciousness bliss. You are Brahma, which is consciousness bliss. Nadaga, hence have this constant certitude, without a speck of doubt, that all ever is Brahma, and that eternal Brahma is my heart. I am ever only of the nature of consciousness. I am only of the nature of changeless consciousness. I am only of the nature of bliss alone, without bondage. I am only of the nature of the pure, non-dual, absolute. I am only of the nature of the immaculate and the bondageless. I am only of the nature of utter peace. I am only of the nature of the limitless supreme brahm. Have this certitude ever. Yeah, there's so many times when, you know, I read a, a chapter and, and, and really try to, you know, absorb it where just in that, you know, for maybe a second, I feel like I'm sitting or standing on holy ground. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, you are this holy ground. You know, I was having this conversation with someone earlier today, this kind of conversation when we were saying, um, like everyone is Krishna. We're using like that. So another way of saying everyone, all is Brahm. Same. <laughs> so like everyone is Krishna. And um, yeah, he was saying the story of he gave money to some beggar on the street and sometimes he feels like he doesn't feel good about when they ask for money or something. And then he said, maybe he was Krishna. And I was like, yeah, he definitely was because <laughs> there isn't anyone else. <laughs> but yeah, it can feel peaceful when we're recognizing that, and it's like it's kind of a like and maybe a swell of love or peace or something. So it feels like you're entering into something, but we're not really entering into something. And um, maybe if something happens, maybe there's like a letting go of something. Somehow when we were reading that, I felt like, I don't know what words triggered it, but it felt just like to just not kind of pick up thoughts or go with thoughts. I don't know what it was that triggered it, but basically like we are the holy ground, we are the, the knowledge, we are wisdom, we are truth, we are Brahma, whatever words you want to use. And just the only thing that makes it seem otherwise is thinking otherwise. Because <laughs> this, yeah, I think it said, like, have that certitude. You know, like, just have that certitude all the time. And the only way you can not have the certitude is if you think, if you're thinking something. Because the thing is, Brahman doesn't need to think I am Brahman. <laughs> it doesn't need to be sure that I am Brahman. The certitude is inherent in it. It's like, or maybe that's another word for it as a certitude <laughs> is another word for Brahman. It's like, it just, it's just like knowing itself. Hmm. It's always been so inspiring to hear you talk about not believing anything. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's kind of what you're referring to. And we've talked about yeah. this before, but it's uh, the crux of meditation, right? When you come mm -hmm. back, it's that you are off believing something. Mm -hmm. I suppose everybody has a different path, you know, in spirituality, but I feel like that has been my path. 
path for the last few years. I think I told you before, like I read A Course in Miracles and then that's like every day for a year. And when I read this line at the time, I don't think it stood out or anything, but I just finished A Course in Miracles maybe a month or two and I was walking along the road and it just kind of something came and said, you are far too tolerant of a wandering mind. And then another part of me was like, yeah, felt like it felt really powerful. You know, like this line just arose inside me. I wasn't thinking about it or doing it, just off a walk. I remember like where I was and everything. <laughs> and it just kind of struck me like, yeah. Like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm far too tolerant. Like we are far too tolerant of the wandering mind. And I was like, I'm not gonna tolerate tolerate mind anymore, wandering, which just meant like being here and not allowing like every time a talk comes you just kind of go with it <laughs> you know and listen to its stories and add to it and really buy into it I suppose it, it developed then into that you don't have to I was using the word at that time listen like you don't have to listen to what the mind is saying all the time and then shortly after that then I met my teacher and auntie and that was one of his main teachings like in the beginning I'm sure he still says it but it was like really he was kind of like pushing it in the beginning he was only starting to teach us at that time and it was like don't believe your next thought um, which was really good and I could totally like like yeah like it felt like it felt like then and it always feels like just that he really speaks what's alive in my heart like it's just you know like like anyone really that you resonate with you know if someone is speaking from the truth it's like there's only one heart like that and like also i was saying to someone today oh, oh no to sorry i can't remember exactly what it was that triggered it but um we were basically just saying that it doesn't matter what the story is what the role is but it's just like if you identify with uh, the story and um, that's what causes the trouble so it's basically the same as like believe it. <laughs> so like the root thing is like you're identifying with a thought that says me, I, you know, um, and you're believing that it means something like that I am. It. Like so to believe it or to identify with it, it's kind of the same. It's just like a different way of expressing. It. Hmm. That, that mechanism of identifying doesn't seem to want to to stop but it also seems um it also seems like it's um uh has a, a bigger outcome yeah, yeah. like, yeah. like i'm seem, i'm i'm that yeah it doesn't seem to want to stop yeah we don't really have let's say i'm saying this right now we don't really have like control over what thoughts appear you know, like so any thoughts can come and they can say anything. And maybe there are new things that we haven't heard before or often they're like old, like repeated things like we've talked about a few times. Um, but that which identifies with those thoughts, like we really do have the power. Like that's the, if we have a power, that's the only power that we do have, whether to believe it or not. And in a way, you say, like, it keeps happening all the time, and it does, because it can happen, like, so quickly. You know, it's like we just, we're so used to giving our identity without question. That's the thing. It's like the thought just comes, and the identity with it, or the connection with it and belief in it comes, what seems, like, almost instantaneously. Like, we're not measuring it, and it's because we're not looking closely enough. But to, to look close enough really just means, like, to step back back isn't necessarily right but like to step into the truth of who we are because then you're here to meet everything that arises straight away so you see everything so you see you can even see if identity goes to <laughs> so even you can see if if identity goes but not really because if you're saying that you're identifying you're really not identifying because you're already a bit like removed and i suppose the way to not identify is to just be really really sure like this says like have this certitude like to be really sure about who you are and the way to do that is really to just look <laughs> or question or be or um 
in a way it's like not doing anything at all <laughs> like that because you wouldn't really ask someone to blindly believe something so maybe in the same way we shouldn't blindly not believe something is a you know like we don't want to you know the the rational thinking mind that we're so used to using you know it's um it doesn't want to just not believe and in a way if we could just not believe that would be wonderful but we're not able to just let go of believing that easily <laughs> we have to we kind of tread softly and we're afraid you know that maybe if i don't believe it something else is going to happen <laughs> but there's nothing forcing us to be really quick and to let go of everything all at once even you know we can move at our own speed the whole time and nobody and i am not asking and nobody is asking us to just blindly believe something or blindly not believe something but rather to just like check and see and i suppose if we're curious about like who i really am then we will look and we have that ability like we have the power to not identify really that's where that conversation started we have the power to not identify in the same way we have the power to to look and check who we are and really who we are doesn't identify like so what what identifies it's like it's just kind of a false idea it's like consciousness or like existence like the existence of who i am it kind of just started to believe it started to it started to attach itself to ideas so as soon as we just stop attaching ourselves to ideas it becomes apparent i suppose more obvious and more clear and i think it gets more and more clear all the time and maybe maybe that's what life is for to just kind of like clean our window our windows of um perception or maybe not perception but yeah like our understanding of our heart we can clean that over and over again not just continue to to clean it and clean it and clean it and clean it and maybe there's only just no window like to clean when there's nobody <laughs> because i feel like that clarity can continue like forever because if, if it's not like that then then it would feel like i've reached somewhere and i i uh, i know or something and i i see completely and that doesn't feel like like it wouldn't feel true and maybe forever even beyond this body you know i don't know It's almost it's like, can... I... well, I was going to say it's for me, it's why what, what you're speaking to is why the latter half of this chapter feels like celebration. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to read some more? I just, um, as you're speaking, my hand turned the page and now I've settled on verse 29. So I'm going to go. Okay. With that. <laughs> <laughs> All life. From the microbes onwards are only consciousness. Mountains, rivers, and forests are only consciousness. All the expanding cities are only consciousness. All wonderful activities are only consciousness. Variegated power is only consciousness. The crores of universes are only consciousness. All things moving and unmoving are only consciousness. All ever is only consciousness. It's funny, isn't it? We just affirm it to ourself, ourself. <laughs> over and over again and there is a great joy in that. <laughs> that's the joy that is the joy <laughs> of life to like just affirm the truth of ourselves and the memory if there is a memory of when we didn't believe that like when we believed ourselves to be something different that just fades and fades and fades and that memory will, like, even memory won't exist. Like, even the memory of a memory 
<laughs> like I used to love where my auntie used to say, he used to say, not even a blade of grass will remain. I feel like it's very poetic and mm. beautiful. So oh, it's like that, like nothing, nothing will remain, like not even a memory of this world and stories and all of that. All of that is like fading, 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 fading. Mm. <laughs> and it's not that this world is bad because this world, like it says, this world is consciousness and this world is bliss and everything that moves is bliss. But just the memory of things being separate and things being different, all of that. And memory itself <laughs> that you don't need. Husband, son, and wife are only consciousness. Father and mother are only consciousness. All the special relatives are only consciousness. Outsiders and enemies are only consciousness. The disciple who follows the instruction is only consciousness. The guru who bestows the instruction is only consciousness. All beings in different states are only consciousness. All that is seen is only consciousness. It just feels so good to say that. <laughs> it's like just waking up to that truth and like that coming back to our consciousness <laughs> so when it's coming to our consciousness that all is consciousness it feels so joyful like like waking up from a bad dream and our dream doesn't even have to have been that bad <laughs> for it to feel super joyful because it's just so good in comparison <laughs> in comparison to like the best possible dream that you could have in this world like the best if you had all the whatever are all the most wonderful things in this life like it's nothing compared to the truth <laughs> even the perfect gingerbread house doesn't compare no <laughs> Well, I don't know about that yet. <laughs> I haven't. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't confirm that yet because I haven't stuck the house together. Yet. It might. It might come close. I don't know. It's made of it love, so that's a good start. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you read one. I, I stopped I stopped at 30, so you're limited to another 20 verses if you want to move forward from there, but you can do anything you like. <clears throat> what is seen as wondrous is only consciousness. This is verse 22. What is seen as different and apart is only consciousness. What appears as that is only consciousness. What appears as oneself is only consciousness. What appears as the word consciousness is only consciousness. What appears to be not consciousness is also only consciousness. All that is seen as imaginary is only consciousness. All the appearances that are seen are only consciousness. This is uh, making it impossible to hold on to anything. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's even you know, even grasping. Grasping is consciousness. Yeah. Even so holding on, like this says, only the word consciousness, or what appears as the word consciousness, is only consciousness. <laughs> so even holding on to that idea. That all is consciousness, like even that we can't hold on to, and we don't want to hold on to because the feeling of holding on is like not what we want. Like, we know that that's no, it's not free, it doesn't feel free, and it feels limiting. It's actually limiting even to 
fall down to all this consciousness. And somehow we're coming back, like all of these words is what's pointing to our true state and to hold on to anything that is not being in our true state. Mm. You know, like all the words, like whatever words I say, some words like might feel more impactful than other words. <laughs> and like they're all just for myself. <laughs> Like, I think I heard Ananta saying once, like, whatever I speak is for myself alone first. And I can, like, totally relate to that. Like, it's just for myself. And then it's like, because you are here as well. Like, if you like them or want them to take them, then you can have them. <laughs> but, like, I'm speaking them for myself. And, like, this is saying, there's only myself. <laughs> it's like, there's, like, seemingly different parts of myself, but even that's only a scene. There isn't even different parts of myself. Mm. Like I'm not a different part of you than you. Like I'm fully you. I'm fully you as much as you are fully me. Hello. What about this guy? Hello. Well, you can't hear because I'm in the I'm in the, <laughs> the sound. He is myself too. What's his name? His name's Luca, and I have a picture him of him for you later. Oh, God. Yeah, he, we we had some deer in the yard. Um, I'm, I'm looking out um, in the backyard here, and I saw um, a mama deer and a baby deer and a daddy deer. Wow. And they ran around the thing, and they ran around the front of the house. Mm -hmm. And Luca was up over the kitchen sink, looking out at them. And mm -hmm. He had an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen them before? Uh, yeah, a few times, a few times. They're building houses in the, um, they're basically clearing the woods and building houses nearby. So the deer mm. are um, having no. to wander a little bit further. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's just kind of how somewhere. it goes. Nice. Yeah. I hope they live somewhere for them to be. They um, ate my wife's roses and... Yeah. Um, <laughs> Once um, she was out there in her bathrobe with a rake mm -hmm. and I went around the other side of the house with my phone to maybe take a picture and I realized I was probably on the escape path of the deer. Okay. And so the photo that I would maybe have taken would have been the underside of the deer as he runs over me with my uh. wife in the background holding a rake. Oh. Did you actually take that? No, that was just a possibility. Just a quick, quick flash. Uh, yeah. You just saw that picture in your mind. <laughs> I remember having a dream once. And uh, in the dream, I think I was like in water. I don't know why that matters. But like I was in water. And there was these kind of like angelic beings or something. And I was like, I was trying to take pictures. I was trying to take photographs or something. And they were taking them off me. And they said, no, you can't take any pictures with you. They said, like, this is a dream and you can't bring any pictures from this dream. Oh. Me. <laughs> Somewhere when you're talking, I just remember there was a year, years ago. But it's kind of very, like, kind of symbolic. Is that, you know, like, you can't key and what we're talking about, that you can't hold on to anything or keep anything. You can't keep any pictures, mm. ideas. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and just to reiterate what you said that doing so uh that's contraction it's hanging on it's not to try to keep something yeah and you know it's fine as long as you do it because we will do it <laughs> but it's just that i suppose the more we choose truth the more truth truth doesn't hold on to anything already like it's not truth that's holding on to anything it's not it's it's um it's really just our ideas of ourselves even that are holding on to anything. <laughs> so yeah, the more we choose truth, all of that just falls away by itself. Mm -hmm. It's because like, you can't really make yourself let go. It almost feels like something like if you were holding on to something, it's like to hold on, it's like it's a tension, isn't it? You can't even make yourself do let go somehow. No, it's not a great analogy because in a way you can just do it. <laughs> but like it's not something that we know how to do. But I feel like choosing 
choosing what's true. That is how you do. You know, as as <laughs> you spoke, as you spoke, you had your hand closed here. Yeah. You had your hand closed and your video froze. <laughs> That's what happened. That's what happened in life. It was like just a tiny little blip. It's like a tiny little blip of an idea and like it seemed like we grabbed onto the idea for like tiny little, not even a second. And then it's like, but it was just like a, it's like a frozen video, just like that. But really, really it didn't stop in this end. <laughs> like we got caught in that picture. We got caught in the picture. <laughs> but we didn't really though. <laughs> Know. We didn't really get caught in the picture. We just believed that we got caught in the picture. And the picture didn't mm. even happen. Mm. Not, the picture itself is just an idea. Hmm. I'm like, what is an idea? I love that. Like, <laughs> somehow, Course in Miracles is coming to me again. There's a line in A Course in Miracles and it says, Ideas leave not their source. They use that kind of language. <laughs> so, like, ideas. Ideas says, leave. Ideas leave not their source. Mm. So it just means like ideas don't leave their source. So ideas arise within the truth that we are and they have nowhere to go. You know, because we believe ourselves to be that idea. Like the idea arises and we we believe that we've separated it off from from God or life or consciousness or drama, whatever way we want to look at it. <laughs> but we never have. So even if even if we believe that the idea became real. It's like, that's why A Course in Miracles is like it's another kind of pointing, just mm. reminding us that even if the idea did happen, which it didn't really, but even if it did, it, like it didn't leave its source. So we're just forever always at home, whether we're believing ourselves to be an idea or not. Mm. Mm. I have to say, I don't really know why it matters <laughs> if we believe ourselves to be an idea or not. I guess it's just that we suffer. We suffer when we believe something that's not true. When we believe ourselves to be an idea, we suffer and we don't need to suffer. That's it. That's the only thing. <laughs> Can you hear him saying? My little boys. <laughs> Same because. <laughs> we do um, a morning meeting at work. There are 15 of us, maybe 16 of us, all on a Zoom meeting. And um, one of my colleagues just, ha just had a baby. Mm. And um, I could hear the baby sort of um, cooing a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's a big boy too. He's um, <clears throat> my my colleague is uh, he's probably you know two hundred eighty pounds or so. Mm -hmm. So the baby, you know, the baby, he's <laughs> 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 teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. Can I read <clears throat> one or two more verses? Please. Consciousness itself is the infinite peace. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the supreme abode. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the highest. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the higher than the highest. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the supreme knowledge. 
Consciousness itself is of the nature of the supreme attainment. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the supreme existence. Consciousness itself is of the nature of the completely full. Hence, you are consciousness. I am consciousness. All the world, beings, and the Lord are consciousness. Have this certitude as taught by me in your mind quite steadfastly. By this undivided certitude, you will attain the undivided knowledge of the Supreme Granny, Great Sage, and overcoming quickly the sorrow of recurrent birth and death attain the great bliss of liberation. I'm down. <laughs> Do you know that expression? No. <laughs> it means uh, I'm in total agreement. Oh, I'm good with I'm, that. I'm, yeah, I'm down with that. I'm good oh, with that. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Almost like any time we find ourselves behaving from a place of separation. That's a good time to look a bit closer. Or any time we're believing something about someone else. It's somehow very easy to notice that more than noticing ideas that we have about ourselves. <laughs> but whatever it is, so if we start experiencing that where somebody is annoying us or we're thinking anything less than loving things about someone, that's a good time to look a little bit closer. <laughs> the truth of who we are. Anytime we notice any false perception coming into our field of vision, <laughs> that's a good time to have a little closer look mm. about who we think we are. We just like, hold on a minute here. Who do I, who am I taking myself to be right now? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <Instinct. laughs> My face is going to hurt from smiling so much pretty soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we should practice sometime. We should come on. We should not smile at all. We should just, <laughs> I wonder if we could just come and be like, and then try to only feel the smile on the inside. <laughs> so only feel the smile inside. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, I did actually used to believe, I can vaguely remember, but it's now like that. Like you had to, if you were happy, you'd be smiling or something. And if you were, I don't know, if it, you were, maybe it was the opposite. If you were just looking serious, then you're not happy, you know. But like you can definitely smile a lot and not be happy. And you can also do that. You can have a very serious look and be really joyful inside. So really, we can't really tell anything about somebody else by how they look. Either. And really, we don't need to know anything about anyone else. Firstly, because there isn't anyone else. <laughs> and it's really only important what's going on inside us. So even if you're surrounded, you could be surrounded by um, sages and enlightened beings and all of this. And even people who consciously say, they say, and maybe everyone's blissful and happy. But if you're not, it's not going to make a difference to you. 
<laughs> or like the opposite. You could be surrounded by people who are completely miserable, you know, and really it shouldn't make a difference to you if you're happy inside. But really, of course it does because people are misery. We don't want people to feel miserable. But it doesn't have to bring us down and we don't have to get brought into it. And really the only, I suppose, what I'm trying to say is like the only thing that we have the power for is just responsibility for our own, our own um, certitude. So mm-hmm. Take that word. And our own just responsibility for ourselves. We're only responsible for ourselves. And then, it, but because we live in a world with seeming others, it, we, we're interacting with people all the time and it will, whatever we're believing about ourselves, it, it kind of, uh, I don't know what's the right word, but it rubs off or it, it affects others. So if we're feeling really bad about ourselves, you know, it will affect the people around us, even if we don't speak, you know, they'll feel the energy. Or also if we're feeling really good about ourselves, and just completely in alignment and in harmony and in the truth of our being, it's going to have an effect on those people around us and maybe even further than that. We don't know. So it is very important and it's the most important work, if you want to call it work, that we can do in this world. It's like mm-hmm. it's an opportunity. This life is an opportunity for us to choose that again and again and again and again. And I'm already awake. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for our time together. I appreciate it much. So um, hip surgery is next Thursday. So Friday, mm-hmm. I should probably be available to um, help out a bit. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, so I'll reach out after next week and maybe we can do that following Friday if you're available. Okay, I'll be thinking about both of you. Okay. I hope, I hope the operation goes good. And... Yeah, yeah, it should be routine. And, you know, yeah. she's healthy and um, we're expecting expecting yeah. everything to be fine. Enjoy it and enjoy your service. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. I will. Thanks again. Thanks Mm -hmm. for being here. Thank you. See you next time.